Thanks, David, and um, thanks everybody for um, coming. Um, so as you can see on this uh, title slide here, uh, I'm going to talk about the Preston model. Um, I'm going to talk about it in terms of community economics, but also social transformation. Um, the social transformation part of it is particularly important uh, to me and to um, many stakeholders in Preston. And it's one of the aspects of the Preston model that is, um, isn't normally um, explained uh, as much as the uh, economics of it. So uh, I think it's important to understand the Preston model as a socio-economic transformation um, and not just an economic transformation. Those things go hand in hand. I'll try and be as um, quick as I can. It's a bit of a challenge to do this in the uh, time set. Um, David, if I'm waffling on, feel free to um, stop me. So here is a sort of um, graphic that explains the uh, ecosystem of the Preston model. Um, in the middle, you can see you have the city of Preston um, and around it from the top clockwise, you have the anchor institutions, which in Preston are the Gateway Housing Association, Preston's College, Lancashire County Council, uh, and the police. Um, it could include the hospital as well. Um, anchor institutions are those institutions in the city of Preston that are um, spend a lot of money, employ a lot of people, and they're not going to go anywhere. Um, come good times or bad times in the uh, local economy, those anchor institutions are there to stay. Uh, to the right of that, you've got the Preston Cooperative Development Network, um, which uh, I founded with colleagues in 2017, um, the purpose of which is to create um, a, not only to create individual cooperatives, but to create a network of cooperatives that together can uh, help each other and share resources and cooperate with each other rather than com compete with each other. Um, and the purpose of the network, the uh, development network, is to uh, promote the uh, creation of those cooperatives and the creation of a cooperative um, society, a cooperative community, sharing cooperative principles and values, not just in the workplace, but also uh, in the community. Uh, next, we have Preston City Council. Um, it's a political um, part of the picture, um, but the political and the social uh, in this particular model are one and the same thing. Um, and uh, they, they have uh, moved in an interesting way from a representational democracy to participatory democracy. Um, and that, that shift, that difference is absolutely essential um, as part of the press and model. So they, it's, it's no longer a feel that people vote people, uh, the, the councillors into positions of power and then the councillors do things to the, uh, to the city, but rather that the councillors are facilitators of change for local communities within the, the Preston area. Um, this has come about partly um, because of um, ideology and philosophy, but it's also come about because of um, austerity and uh, uh, challenges uh, that the councils have had to face uh, in, in the UK. Uh, next to that, we have the, uh, where I work, the University of Central Lancashire, uh, a, a huge university, one of the biggest in the UK. Um, and what you have in the university is uh, an understanding that the university is not just an ivory tower that delivers um, highfalutin ideas to students, but that the university is also a player, uh, a neighbor in the local community. And we, uh, the university forges a very close and uh, every day it's a closer relationship with um, Preston City Council. Next to that, we have the development of the Preston Cooperative Education Center uh, or, and or the Cooperative University. Um, the idea being that uh, linked to the University of Central Lancashire, but not um, part of the University of Central Lancashire, but developing uh, cooperative education uh, in, in conjunction with uh, the Cooperative College in Manchester um, and in partnership with um, the University in Mondragon. Um, the idea behind the Preston Cooperative uh, Education Centre is that uh, we want to um, 
provide uh, hands-on practical uh, education for people who want to begin cooperatives um, on the one hand um, and we're basing a lot of that work on trade union education um, and on the other hand we want to offer um, uh, higher education degrees uh, a BA in cooperative leadership management and culture um, and above that we have the uh, in development the Northwest Mutual Community and Cooperative Bank um, which uh, we're developing to serve the city of Preston and to serve the uh, the northwest region, the Lancashire region. So those are the main uh, aspects of the uh, Preston model, and they all work together. They are intimately linked. Uh, the model really couldn't exist um, without all of those aspects linked together. Now, I know that you've recently had um, uh, a talk on the the donut um, donut economics um, and uh, here I think you can see how the Preston model uh, can easily be fitted in and fuse itself with the centerpiece of the donut uh, model so in the center of course you have the human social aspect and in the outside you have the the planet as a whole um, and in the center, a lot of these central human needs are catered for by the Preston model. Uh, first and foremost, uh, jobs, voice, giving a voice, giving agency to people through creating participatory democracy and models of uh, cooperative ownership where people can choose to decide what to do and how to govern their, their lives. Resilience, cooperative models of business, cooperative business models have been demonstrated to be more resilient in uh, economic difficulties than um, standard capitalist models. Education, we're working hard to change the chip, change the, the, the uh, ideas that have been sort of fused and preset into our minds about what constitutes a social system, what constitutes an economic system. Um, so that's why we're designing the Preston Cooperative Education Centre. Income. Whatever income is generated in Preston, uh, and in particular, whatever income is generated uh, it, through cooperative businesses, that income stays and remains with the workers who own the businesses. That income does not go into the pockets of shareholders who have nothing to do with Preston, who may not even live in the UK, who may have tax havens elsewhere. Instead of that, the income uh, remains in Preston and it stays in the pockets of the people who generate that income in Preston and is spent in Preston. Gender equality, because in, if we create cooperative businesses and if we run other aspects of our communities which are not cooperative businesses but still adhere to cooperative principles and values, then gender equality is part of that. Social equity, if you work in a cooperative business, uh, and we take our examples in this case from the Mondragon Cooperative Corporation in the Basque Country in the north of Spain. If you work in a cooperative business, there's only about uh, ma a maximum of six uh, differences between the lowest paid worker and the highest paid worker. And uh, that actually is, a, is, a, is an incredible uh, share of, of the wealth that's produced. Um, just to give you an idea of what that means, in, in a normal global corporation, the difference between the lowest paid and the highest paid uh, worker is something in the region of 350 uh, degrees of difference, 350 to 380. So in, in a uh, cooperative business uh, of the kind that we're creating, the difference will be approximately six or less. And here you have a, a graphic that demonstrates the, how, how we want to combine the idea of uh, democracy and the uh, principles, the cooperative principles and values with the idea of creating wealth. For us, the democratic commitment is 
the same and equal to wealth. We don't we don't believe that uh, you 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 can have um, de democratic commitment without uh, generating wealth. We're not afraid of making money. What we're concerned about is that the money should remain with the people who create the money, and that should remain in the local area for the benefit of uh, individuals, groups, societies, and communities within. Uh, within um, Preston in, in our case. So how far have we got? Well, um, this graphic here really does demonstrate um, how successful we've been um, up, up to the year 2017. And although I haven't got figures for 2020, um, we've got no reason to believe that these um, have got any less impressive um, today. So in 2012 to 13, um, only 5% of the anchor institution spends, if you remember the anchor institutions are institutions like the university, the police, the hospital, uh, the uh, big housing association, Lancashire County Council, those big institutions. Only 5% of the spend of those institutions was spent in Preston. By the time we get to 2017, that's risen to 18.2%, uh, an increase of nearly 75 million um, pounds. And in the Lancashire region as a whole, uh, the area surrounding Preston, uh, the figures are even more impressive. So in 2013, 12 to 13, 39% of the anchor institution's total spend was spent in the Lancashire region. And uh, by the time we get to 2017, uh, that's nearly 80%, um, a total of uh, 200 million uh, pounds. Money repatriated uh, into the Preston and into the Lancashire region. So that money is, is not new money, that money is simply money that the anchor institutions have decided, because we persuaded them, they've decided to um, spend that money uh, in the local region. Um, it's not it's not taking money away from uh, other regions close by it's taking away money from the global corporations with um, their headquarters in places like london and uh, tax havens in places like bermuda it's taking away that uh, money which goes out of preston immediately and um, spending it uh, in in the preston and uh, lancashire region so that that money is repatriated into the local area uh, for the obvious benefit of um, communities in Preston. And how successful has this been? Well, if you look at the um, most improved city index by PricewaterCooperhouse and Demos in 2015 to 17, you can see that Preston's by far the most improved city since between 2015 and 17. And not only is it the most improved uh, city, as you can see on the bottom uh, line there, it's improved by miles. It's, it's a huge, uh, vast improvement in itself, but it's also much greater improvement than any of the other uh, cities that are listed in this um, table here. Um, so this, uh, at the time, before the change of the um, Labour uh, leadership, um, this became known as um, Corbynomics, um, which isn't necessarily what people like or, or want. But, but the reason this is interesting is that the uh, great success of the um, wealth building project in Preston, called the Preston Model, um, has become, uh, in England, uh, national of, of national importance and and has attracted lots of attention um, for that reason um, and people from the Labour Party um, important people from the Labour Party such as the former leader Ed Miliband um, and the former uh, shadow uh, Chancellor um, J uh, John McDonnell um, have come to Preston uh, to to see what's been done and um, actually incorporated uh, Preston model um, um, ways of working into um, Labour Party um, policies. And those policies would have been um, uh, UK-wide uh, policies had the Labour Party been um, elected into power. Um, the Labour Party uh, actually created this community wealth building unit, um, 
which uh, of which you know I was a member along with other uh, people from the uh, council in Preston um, in order to develop Preston model ideas into ideas which are transferable to other uh, towns and cities and communities uh, in in the UK so um, where are we going what we discovered was that um, there, there comes a certain point where anchor institutions say they can no longer spend locally because there are no uh, suppliers or providers of um, what they need in the local area. Um, so that's what we've identified as being the economic gap, the gap in the local economy. Um, and what we've decided to do following on from uh, identifying that gap is to create uh, worker-owned cooperatives to fill the gap. The purpose of creating a worker-owned cooperative is to fill that economic gap so that more money can be spent in Preston, more money can be generated, more money can be retained in Preston. But also it's because we're very interested in the application of cooperative principles and values uh, in, in, into Preston while we also uh, generate economic wealth. And that's why I said at the beginning of the talk that it's a socio-economic transformation. It's not enough just to build up an extra bit, a bit of money. We want to change the way people relate to each other, think and work. We want to promote uh, cooperative working, not competition. We want to promote um, democratic participation. So that's why we're creating um, worker-owned cooperatives. And in order to do that, we created the Preston Cooperative Development Network. Um, and here are a list of the objectives from the rules of that network. Um, the Cooperative Development Network works itself as a cooperative and um, these are the things that it does. It provides information, advice, consultancy, training, um, premises, equipment, support, facilitating, enabling access to finance, investment, supplies, markets, consumers, uh, cu customers, and it uh, encourages cooperatives and even businesses who are not cooperatives, we encourage corp um, those businesses to think about cooperative uh, principles and values. Um, recently, um, the Pro Present Cooperative Development Network has received some funding from the Open Society Foundations um, and that's helped us to continue our development of a cooperative democratic society within Preston. Uh, we're creating 10 worker-owned co-ops. We're creating a union co-op, which um, brings in um, trade unions into, into the development of worker-owned cooperatives. Uh, we're creating the education center. Um, we're bringing in training from uh, Mondragon and from the uh, United States, an organization called One Worker, One Vote. Um, and team, we're monitoring that in order to feed back the lessons that we've learned, the things that went right, the things that went wrong, to feed that back into the Open Society Foundations so that they can spread their funding um, appropriately. Um, Another good idea, if you like, that we had was to create a bank. A lot of these ideas have come from the uh, Mondragon uh, experience. Um, so some of you may know that in uh, Mondragon, they reached a stage where uh, they decided it was necessary to have a bank. And so um, they created a bank. And this is the name of the bank. It's called Laboral Cucha. Um, and in our case, we're well aware that when the funding from Open Society Foundations uh, it finishes, when it dries up, uh, the uh, present cooperatives and the future cooperative businesses will need to uh, borrow money and uh, they'll need to have a source of money. And we know very well that the high street banks won't lend them this money. Um, and so um, that's why we're creating a um, Lancashire Community and Cooperative Bank. Um, so that's well on the way and within 18 months or so from, from today, the first uh, high street branch of that bank will open its doors um, in, the, in Preston and we're very excited uh, that that's happening. Another good idea is the Cooperative Education Centre, the University. Um, in, in partnership with the Cooperative College in Manchester, the Cooperative University will be a federated university with branches around the UK. And as I mentioned before, the Cooperative Education Centre will provide a combination of practical hands-on um, 
development and courses for people to create cooperatives on the one hand and on the other hand uh, it'll be providing a, uh, a BA degree which eventually will be uh, validated by the Cooperative College in Manchester that will become the Cooperative uh, University. One of our partners um, is uh, in Glasgow, a Centre for Human Ecology. Uh, some of you may be um, uh, aware of that. And the climate emergency. Um, this, the development of the present model is not something that uh, is static and based on some um, idea from a past that we're applying now. The idea behind the present model is that it's organic and developing and uh, a lot of people uh, have felt the need to uh, include uh, uh, tackling the uh, environmental emergency that, that we have, uh, that we're suffering right now now at this very moment. So for example we're uh, applying for uh, funding with uh, PCAN, the Place-Based Climate Action Network, uh, which in Edinburgh is, is, um, has, has partnered with the Edinburgh Centre for Carbon Innovation. Um, and the Place-Based uh, Climate Action Network is about translating climate policy into action on the ground and a lot of what the way it focuses this as you can see, is very much based on the principles of the Preston model. Um, they talk about the key to implementing climate action lying increasingly at the local level, the participation of local actors, businesses and citizens. It's recognised that this is the way to go, um, that there are links between national, international and local delivery, that nothing will happen if it's not local. Um, and important decisions are actually made beyond Westminster. Um, or even in Scotland, maybe they should be made beyond Holyrood. Um, so we're incorporating uh, climate action into, into our work. Uh, the University and the uh, Preston City Council have declared a climate emergency and that is work that's currently uh, underway. Um, here are Mondragon's 10 cooperative principles. These are the cooperative principles that form the basis and foundation for our socio-economic transformation. Um, they are open admission. It's uh, anyone who adheres to the principles can uh, participate in the cooperative development. Democratic organization, absolutely fundamental. We are uh, promoting participation, we're promoting democracy, we're uh, promoting a change in the way people take decisions and govern their lives. Sovereignty of labor, we put labor before money. So money supports labor, not labor supports money. Absolutely fundamental to the way uh, we want to think of things. Um, that's the num number four, it expresses that. Participation in management, that's a similar to democratic organization. Wage solidarity, very little difference between lowest paid and highest paid. Inter-cooperation, this is, this is absolutely fundamental to the way we want to work. And that's why I said when I was talking about the Press and Cooperative Development Network, that we're not just creating individual legal entities which happen to be cooperatives, we are creating a network of cooperatives so that those cooperatives can work with each other uh, uh, in cooperation and not uh, compete with each other. Absolutely fundamental to our entire philosophy. Social transformation, we're, we're doing it to change the fabric of society in Preston. We're not just doing it to um, create a little bit more money. Uh, universality is for everybody, not just a few of the elite. Um, and the importance of a constant um, emphasis on education. Uh, I went to a, a meeting of the uh, a Future of Work meeting uh, just last week with um, colleagues and friends from Mondragon. And when I was talking about the cooperative values and principles, they emphasize that now they also talk about concern for the environment. So that's why I put that in on, on that slide there. And um, is it happening in Scotland? Well, um, a lot of people point to uh, North Ayrshire Council um, and Claire's and uh, Neil uh, are working with North Ayrshire Council. So North Ayrshire Council is the first council in Scotland to become interested in this, um, to adopt a community wealth building approach to economic development. Um, and this, this is actually from their own, their own website. I think the danger uh, here is that North Ayrshire Council, uh, with the backing of Clare's, uh, focus 
uh, too much on the economic aspect and not enough on the social aspect, the aspect that talks about changing the way we live and work together uh, in community in ways I've just been talking about when talking about the Preston model. So the Preston model includes community wealth building, but it's not only community wealth building, it has other aspects. And I hope that I've managed to um, explain some of that in the short time um, available to me. So thank you. Thank you for listening.